All right, today we're going to discuss maybe something just a little bit different, but just as unusual and just as exciting when it comes to scientific discoveries. And specifically, we're going to discuss, um, I guess let me show you a picture, a typical gold nugget. But as you can see, it's not just any gold nugget, it's a gold nugget inside quartz crystals. And it just so happens that this technically represents 75% of all gold mined on planet Earth. So for example, for mining industry, this is super important. But until this recent paper, nobody actually had any idea why this exists and how this forms. In other words, nobody actually knew why is it that we find these really large gold nuggets inside various quartz deposits on planet Earth. As a matter of fact, the largest gold nugget ever discovered was also inside quartz. It was approximately 60 kilograms in mass. And turns out that the answer to all of this is somewhat intriguing, kind of unusual, and involves a very bizarre effect produced by quartz itself. And so let's discuss this in a little bit more detail and focus on the research and the experiments from the study you can find in the description by Christopher Voisey and his team. Because here this wasn't just a theoretical discovery, they actually conducted an experiment recreating these nuggets, making them form just as they do inside quartz. But I guess first, well, let's briefly discuss Earth. Or to be more exact, Earth's crust. As you might know, crust contains a lot of different minerals. Over 5,000 to be exact. But there are two minerals that seem to be most common. First one is feldspar, second one is quartz. And the thing about quartz is that it does produce very bizarre crystals. So quartz, which is made out of silicon dioxide, instead of producing symmetrical crystals, like so many other elements or molecules, tends to produce something that's just a little bit biased on one side. Which basically makes certain molecules kind of stick out, and as a result, if ever this crystal is disturbed, it actually ends up producing voltage or releases charge. Which basically makes quartz a very bizarre piezoelectric substance. And this phenomenon known as piezoelectricity, or as my son calls it, pizza electricity, which I think I'm going to be using for the rest of the video, is a phenomenon involving electric charge produced when there is any pressure or heat applied to certain crystals. And though I think quartz is probably the most well-known such mineral or such crystal, there are some other ceramics and even biological matter, such as our DNA, that can actually produce this as well. So yeah, technically, your DNA is also a piezoelectric material. But in order to produce this charge, there has to be some kind of a mechanical interaction with all of this crystalline material. And naturally, once this phenomenon was discovered, sometimes in 1880s, this was actually discovered by the famous Pierre Curie, the same guy who discovered radiation with his wife, Mary Curie, all of this suddenly found a lot of use in a lot of different industries. As a matter of fact, right here around me, I can see at least three different things that use pizza electricity to some extent. Right there is my gas stove that uses a sparkler that actually relies on pizza electricity to then basically light a spark in order to ignite the gas stove. And so knowing what we know about quartz and how good it is at producing electricity and voltage, the next obvious question is, okay, so what happens inside planet Earth with all of these quartz deposits when it gets disturbed by something? For example, an earthquake. Well, interestingly, there's a video I made previously that you can find in the description that discusses a bizarre phenomenon known as the earthquake lights that could potentially be explained by quartz charge released during powerful earthquakes in certain locations on the planet. Now, this is still a widely disputed hypothesis and doesn't actually have a lot of proof, but because so many different earthquake lights have been discovered around the planet, using quartz as a potential explanation is not actually that far-fetched after all. And so essentially during earthquakes, all of these quartz crystals definitely produce a lot of voltage everywhere. But the question is, what effects does all of this have? Well, this is where we don't have a lot of answers, but now we have one answer, with the answer connecting to what I showed you previously, those gold nuggets. And that's because during earthquakes, when all of this quartz gets deformed, it also obviously cracks, producing a lot of deformations. And whenever something cracks inside the planet, this pretty quickly gets filled with some kind of a underground water. Now, in most locations on the planet, this is just going to be your regular river, lake, or seawater, so it's most likely not going to contain much. But in some locations, very close to hydrothermal vents, different types of hydrothermal fluids coming from within the crust and enriched by the mantle itself will usually contain quite a lot of metals. And so once this water seeps into these cracks, it can actually distribute a lot of different metal particles inside these quartz deposits. And this has actually been known for a very long time, but there was a bit of a mystery. This still did not explain how these nuggets form. 
because technically all these particles, including gold, should be equally distributed everywhere. Yet instead, we know that there are nuggets of gold forming in quartz, with these nuggets sometimes becoming giant. And so the question was, how exactly does all of this mineralization happen inside quartz? With the answer now being really obvious. During typical earthquakes, the crystals don't just crack, they also start to produce a lot of electric charge and a lot of voltage. With this voltage, now causing certain particles to precipitate and to start forming tiny pieces. And the thing about quartz is that it's also a relatively good insulator, so the charge itself doesn't travel through earth and usually stays around those crystals and can only basically travel through this water. On the other hand, gold is an excellent conductor. And so basically, even tiny gold particles start to act as tiny electrodes, beginning the process of precipitation inside quartz crystals. And turns out that once these tiny particles find some kind of a place inside the crystal, additional molecules and additional particles of gold start to attach to it almost right away. With all this gold now concentrating in very specific spots, making these grains grow larger and larger every single year with every earthquake. With all of this only stopping when the crack itself becomes filled with gold and the water can no longer seep through because this gold now basically plugged all of the cracks. And so in a nutshell, because quartz is a piezoelectric material and is able to create its own electric charge, every time there's an earthquake in certain locations on the planet, the tiny fractures inside these crystals and the pumping of hydrothermal fluids through these cracks ends up filling them with gold that then eventually plugs these cracks after several years. Okay, cool. Very interesting explanation. But does this actually have any merit? Well, it turns out that the researchers from the study have now conducted an actual experiment proving all of this. And here this was really simple. They took two slabs of quartz and made one vibrate, basically mimicking an earthquake, while the other was just staying still. Here the vibration was very similar to a typical earthquake, which are usually between 1 Hz and 20 Hz in frequency. In this case, they basically went for 20 Hz. And so the stress from this vibration, with the slab moving up and down 20 times per second, ended up producing constant voltage of about 0.4 to 1.4 volts. And they did this for one hour. And interestingly, just after that one hour, they started to see tiny clusters of gold micrometers in size. And the gold itself was coming from the water that was actually enriched with gold particles, but the particles themselves were super tiny. And so here this was the result of actual physical growth after just one hour. But this was only produced in the slabs that were jiggled 20 times per second. Nothing happened to the quartz that was not moving. And so basically by replicating these seismic waves and pizza electricity, they essentially proved that gold nuggets indeed are produced because of earthquakes and because of pizza electric effects inside quartz crystals. But in this case, we obviously don't need geologic stress to produce voltage to then produce these nuggets. In other words, by using just the right voltage and by using water enriched in gold, we can hypothetically produce these gold nuggets artificially by just using the right amount of voltage. With this experiment also showing us that gold tends to solidify on top of existing gold deposits and does so really quickly. So basically by giving gold a chance to precipitate on top of other gold particles, we can hypothetically build these nuggets super quickly. In some sense giving us a really interesting way to artificially create gold nuggets. Or to at least possibly find them in certain locations where we know there are a lot of earthquakes, a lot of quartz deposits, and of course hydrothermal vents that are able to provide gold enriched water. In other words, for industries involved in gold mining or even industries just needing gold for various purposes, this is a really exciting discovery. But it's also an exciting discovery because it once again shows us that quartz is just really strange and it does produce really weird effects inside the planet. And because our planet contains so much quartz, what happens to all of these electric charges and how it affects the planet, that's actually the question we cannot answer yet. As a matter of fact, because of these discoveries, maybe we'll have more answers on what happens to all of this charge from quartz and how it possibly affects the planet in a lot of different ways. As a matter of fact, there have been suggestions that maybe this is one of the main reasons why certain molecules on Earth were able to evolve so much easier and, of course, why life might have started here as well. And so in some sense, these quartz crystals and their piezoelectric effects can eventually provide answers for a lot of different mysteries that we still have no answers for. But until then, well, that's I guess pretty much it. It's a really exciting experiment, a really exciting study, and kind of tells us just a little bit more about 
how little we know about planet Earth and how mysterious it really is. Once there are some additional discoveries, we'll come back and talk more about this in some of the future videos. Until then, thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support the channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.